if we can focus on this for a second, I just want to laugh. There have been so many absurd articles attacking Corbin for his lifestyle. My personal favorite, the Daily Mail and a bunch of other rags published an entire article about how Corbin, one of Corbin's wives left him because he was always working and he was always at the office. <laughs> and apparently she was like, yeah, he used to eat cold beans out of a can. That's how low they're scraping the barrel. I remember that. Monster. They were like, he works too hard. He's too committed to his job of helping people. And he eats beans out of a can. I want to share two other smears that are my favorites. All right, here's a Daily Mail article from July 2016. Revealed Jeremy Corbyn's paranoid leadership team plot for hours, blah, blah, blah. While the labor leaders sit silently in meetings munching noodles and granola bars. They wrote an entire article about how in meetings he eats noodles. Wow. <laughs> the lead of the piece is... Jeremy Corbyn's paranoid team waste hours discussing internal labor pots to oust him while the leader sits silently munching noodles or a granola bar. Former aides have revealed. <laughs> what? I okay. get what a scoop. Well, he's got a balanced diet. I mean, beans are the protein, the noodles, you got carbs. <laughs> and then of course, the, the biggest mensch moment ever was when he sat on the floor in the train but some people tried to spin that as like, it's all pee on. You can't yeah. sit on the floor. You pee on. Yeah, yeah well, they actually said it was a rich. big PR move. And we were like, you guys are all about PR. What are you suddenly criticizing it for? Like if Tony Blair pulled off something like that, they'd be like, man of the people. This man is a, an election guru. He knew how to manage <laughs> those optics. It was amazing. And it's like Jeremy Corbyn's like, there's no way on earth I'm buying a first class ticket to sit there when these poor buggers haven't got a seat. And they go, oh, it's awful awful he just uses the media trying to paint himself out as some sort of hero You're going, yeah I, I think uh it was i don't know if it was the guardian or who they published an analysis uh you know a, like like a forensic analysis like they do on syrian chemical attacks to show that there were empty seats there are seats available um, they literally had them circled in red and everything. They were like, look, we've got this still of the CCTV and you can clearly see this seat. Yeah. It just, uh, the energy, you know, they're going into to, to, I mean, what is the result of even debunking this story? He didn't, he ultimately had a very uncomfortable train journey. And then the final one, the greatest smear of all time was that Jeremy Corbyn is not fit to be prime minister because he refused to name his cat and he just called it El Gato. <laughs> that, was an, that was a real piece. He called his cat El Gato. I can relate. I had uh, two cats I inherited when I moved into an old house once and uh, I called them cat one and cat two. So <laughs> Basically, they go through these cycle of rows. It's bizarre. So they've had the same basic three or four arguments for now three years. And you can watch it like, like literally we're on Twitter now, people going, oh, oh, okay. It's um, a friend of extremists news cycle this week. So they'll trot out the old photos and it's like, never mind that Tony Blair's there shaking hands with the Saudi princes and <laughs> everything. Else. And they're going, that's called pragmatism, Tony. Pragmatism, you know. Jeremy Corbyn's got a photograph with, you know, a disabled person in a wheelchair who, you know, blocked Regent Street in London. He's an extremist. It, it, it just, yeah. So yeah. there's the friend of extremists and then there'll be something about him wearing a cardigan or riding a bike. There's some buffoonery week, you know, it's just like, isn't he just so silly? A Maoist style bicycle, apparently. <laughs> there, there are articles saying it was a Maoist style bike, whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, but he, it, it's so quaint. He rides a bicycle. Just a few years ago, he was hosting Max Blumenthal at Port Cullis House in Westminster to talk about Palestine. You know, he was with the people. You know, honestly, uh, I was attacked in the Daily. I was used in the Daily Mail to attack Jeremy Corbyn because uh, he had hosted a talk I'd given at, um, as I mentioned, at Port Cullis House was kind of like a cutout of Westminster, and you know, it was an open public talk and. You know, they said anti-Semite Max Blumenthal, who hates Jews and therefore hates himself and wakes up every morning and like cuts his own wrists because he's Jewish, spoke and um, this is bad and, you know, he Holocaust this and that. I don't know what, it, they just piled everything on and I went to uh, 
Jeremy's chief of staff and said, you know, should I write a response to this? Just, you know, straightening this out and showing how many lies are in this piece. And he said, you know, don't even worry about it because nobody pays attention to this crap. The people are basically uh, ignoring this and see it for what it is. And this was back in 2015. And I said, no, you can't, you can't be serious, man. Like the, the, there's just this tidal wave of lies. You've got to respond. And they were right. I mean, they, it was, it was, tr it was true.